Hi everyone, this is um, something a bit different. I don't really do this on this channel. I've actually got two YouTube channels and I do vlogging on the other channel. Um, and this go-karting channel, I've never really done any vlogging on it because it's just getting into go-kart driving. So I thought I'd share a bit, something a bit different. Anyway, so this is a project I've got going. going. I've got a trailer. I know, exciting stuff, eh? Um, the problem was that me and my son have both got carts now and trying to move carts around is a bit of a nightmare for mine particularly strip everything off it to get it in the car and i mean it's down to like virtually chassis to get it in which then means you have to virtually full rebuild at the other end to get it you know racing anyway so i've been looking for a while for a trailer um wanted something large enough that i could get both in and originally i was just thinking like a you know a normal box trailer something i could wheel it in even if i still take the wheels off but something i could roll it in um so as many of you who actually have your own carts will know that you're trying to find a trailer that's four and a half ish feet wide for an adult cart's rear axle. Um, cadets carts aren't so bad because they're like 1.15 I think wide on the rear axle, so they actually fit in an estate car when I'm taking them apart, but adult carts don't fit. So yeah, I've been looking for a trailer and this is it. This is my trailer. I'll give you a tour. This is a corner. Here is another corner. And over this far side, there is um, some more corners. Anyway, if those of you have ever seen these tough trailers before, this is actually an old BT box unit that used to go on the back of a transit van, and then people put them onto a caravan chassis. So that's exactly what this is. It's um, it's big. And because it used to be a BT trailer, they had a workbench in it, things like that. So that's what I'm literally in the middle of doing at the moment. Um, I got this. It's a bit worse for wear when I first got it. Um bits on it need working i mean the interior lights i've kind of half got them working but i'm going to rip them out and put leds in anyway because old halogen lights they um they eat the power so bits and pieces like that the door locks i'm sorting out at the moment um this workbench like i said i'm sorting all this out the floor needed gutting all the panel work was loose i've started riveting that on today um the old rivets i've sheared them up. the old rivets i've drilled out and yeah, drilled them all out and then just riveted them again. The, yeah, it's, hopefully it'll come together quite nicely. And I like this because you can't easily see it. Let me take the camera down a bit. See if I can get it. So in this region of the, the van, um, between the shelf here and that, that is actually wide enough to get my um, senior road tax in there. So I can actually get that in with the wheels on it and not have to do anything to it. And there's a wheel arch down here that you can't quite see in the shot. And between the wheel arch and the bench, I can get my lad's cadet car. It's it's big. I mean, I'm stretching out from side to side. It's it's over two meters wide and it's about over three meters long. So it's it's a big old unit. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to be using this more for the karting. Anyway, I'm going to short video ish. I'm going to um yeah, I'm going to start putting up a few little videos on the progress of this trailer. See if I can get this um, old. BT trailery thing, a new lease of life. Um, those of you who care, I mean, what can I say about it? It used to have two beacons, but now instead it's got two holes in the roof, so at the moment it leaks. I'm going to get myself a fiberglass patch kit and patch it over. Probably won't do the, um, what's it called now? I can't think what the res. It's like a there's a set there's another coat to fiberglass you you have the rough layer of fiberglass and then you put like a gel coat that's it i'm not going to like this at the moment because this this is actually a double wall trailer it's, re it's actually really well built um and this was actually a bargain as well it's only six hundred bargain 650 quid um the running gear on it's okay it needs a bit of servicing on it but generally speaking it's okay it's solid enough the the, sh the shell of the the box it's okay it's bolted down securely like I said, the things that I had problems with was down this wall, you can't easily see it in this video at the moment in time, but there's rivets all the way down the spars inside the van. Um, the way that this van's actually constructed is, again, I'm just going to just say it, but you have a horizontal beam that's fixed to the outer skin. Then on, that, on those horizontal beams, you have a vertical beam, which then carries all the horizontal beams down to the floor. And then from those vertical beams, there's another set of horizontal beams which go on the other side of it. So you actually have three aluminium beams inside the wall cavity. I didn't notice until today, until I started re rebooting again. I drilled a few of them, took the panel away from the wall, and I could suddenly see what the makeup was inside the wall. 
So it's quite substantial actually. It's about probably about that thick in the cavity. So it means it's solid. It's actually probably more solid than most other trailers. So yeah. I mean I don't think it's gonna survive if you, if you if you roll it over it's not gonna survive, but yeah, it's it's substantial enough to to do things with and actually put things on the wall like tooling or whatever. But I said there's this workbench, it's, it's a primitive old workbench, it's nothing fancy. As you can see, it's a it's an old ply bench with a, a shelf up here. I mean, ignore the wire that's hanging down at the moment. Um, it's a primitive old shelf, We've got a bit of aluminium U-channel over the outside of it here. I've literally drilled the rivets off the edge of this, sanded it down and done that. The plan is that in a minute, I'm going to paint this bench um, with an undercoat, like a stain sealer. And paint that bit, paint these sides and all the other bits of it because there's actually some racking underneath here as well, which you can't easily see at the moment. Um, and it's actually going dark outside at the moment, which is another useful thing that this roof in this, and I've got the roof in the van is actually um, translucent, so it lets light in, which is kind of helpful. Um, got a little skylight. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, it's got a little skylight. You can actually um, angle it down as well, so if you, you can have the skylight open while you're driving and not putting the rain in it as well. It's like. This, considering, I know it's an XBT van, and it's, I've actually got a date stamp on there, it's from 2000, it's 2010, so it's, at the moment, 11 years old. Um, in fact, it's, so it's 11 years old in November, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not been the best looked after, but then again, it was, a, it, was it belonged, you know, the BT workforce, but it's 10, it's only 10 years old, and there's a lot more trailers on the road that are a lot older than that. Um, granted, again, I know it's on a caravan chassis and it's not its own chassis, but this never had a chassis. This was literally a box unit. I'll find a picture and put it on the screen, but it's literally a box unit that was a fiberglass shell that lived on a thing like a flatbed transit. And on the flatbed transit, that's what was responsible for um, holding this box unit on. But it meant that the BT engineers had a workbench in here. They had storage over this side, which has now been all taken out. But they had workbench storage they could do jobs whilst they're in the field without getting soaking wet um and i think that's what it was i think it's more of a field service van i'm sure if anybody's ever seen what it knows of bt they probably could tell me in the comments what what these were really used for one of the things it's got as well it's actually still got its old um camping stove thing let me um stop the camera so yeah it's got this um Ignore the mess at the moment, just kind of dumping everything all over the place. It's actually a camping stove. So yeah, that's, there's that. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna keep this cupboard. I wasn't, I was, at first I was debating to get rid of these cupboards, but I'm going to keep this cupboard because it's useful that if you're on a wet race day that you can, well, I'm going to get rid of this, but I should probably put a normal rail on it, but it's useful having a really tall locker that then if you've got a wet, wet race suit, whilst you're driving up, I can just hang it up and let it just drip on the floor in here because then it, it's not putting wet things in the car, is it? Um, there's the shelving that was on the belt that's underneath there. You've got like some little shelves and then some bigger shelves here. It's it's something. I'm not quite sure what this hole was used for. It's not that big, um, but yeah, I'm not sure what hole was used for. But like I said, there's, um, as you see down here, there's some like fiberglass that's broken on the inside. There's bits of it broken on the outside. Door locks need attention. Um, but generally speaking, for the price, I can't complain. So it's going to be an interesting project. It'll be interesting once I finally get the carts in it as well. But yeah, so give it a lick. Of, I've, I've jet washed it, degreased it. Um, used about four litres of Karch or um, deep clean spray dish, uh, spray additive. So yeah, it's, um, it's going to be interesting when I finally get this up and running. The idea being that then me and my lad, when we, you know, when he actually, when we get the time more, that we can actually go away for a proper race weekend somewhere else at a different track. And then the idea is that I'm probably going to get rid of that cooker anyway. But over the top of that one there, I'll have a shelf going across that wall. And then lower down, I'll have like another little box section. I'll get some cheap foam mattresses maybe from Ikea or something. And then turn it into like a, into like a sleeper. So you've got the space up this end to, to sleep. You've still got the space down here. that Because the cart from the door will come up to about, about where my... Where the front of this hoover is here, so it'll probably come up to about here. But then that means then that the space from where my foot is now to here is actually in between my legs now. That's actually an open space of 
of nothing. So, although you could, you've still got that there, you could actually still get changed in here when whilst the cards were stored in here overnight, and then you could get yourself set up for the morning. Got loads of space, loads of potential. Um, I've got a gazebo coming on order for it. Well, I've got it on order. It's coming from MX Moto online. Um, but the package that it comes in, I figured out that it will sit on the bench. So at least when the gazebo is here, it's got somewhere to live that it will just go on the bench. Um, BT have these nice handy rivet straps, um, clip straps that are riveted to things. So I'm going to repurpose them. And chances are I'm going to put them on the wall to the bench at the ends. And then when the gazebo is here, I can put the gazebo on the bench and strap it down. So whilst I'm driving around, it's not going to fly all over the place. Yeah. But overall... I said it needs bits of work doing to it, but most of it's like labour as opposed to spending money on it, which is which is quite good. I said a lick of paint. I've got paint already left over. I've got some like I've got a tin of stain blocker that will probably quite happily paint all of this. I may gloss it all. Um, I may gloss it all. I don't know. I've got some floor paint that I was going to use on my garage. I've, I built my garage, and that's in my other YouTube channel. Um, I built my garage and I was going to use some floor paint on that, but I never used it. So I've got five litres of floor paint and I think um, this trailer, which is like three and a bit by two and a bit. I think five litres of paint will definitely paint the floor in here. So that's not going to be a problem either. Um, like I said, LED lighting, that's that's only going to be a few quid. I'm going to actually repurpose the original fittings and then put some, find some LED fitting that I can put, or some LED lamp actually inside there. Because I've still got the, the plastic covers, so if I can put my own LED light in there, I can just stick that over the top. Again, saving me some bloody money. So yeah, can't complain. But yeah, like I said, it's um it's it's gonna be mostly labour in in uh, uh, labour costing wise. Not bothered about that so much. Just to chisel away at it when I get time at night. Um I'm gonna have to the trailer as standard doesn't have any lights on the back really. So I'm going to wire up my own. I've seen some cheap LED lights that I've seen on Amazon. I think they were about 15 quid for a set. They weren't that expensive. Um, so I'm going to get them. I'm an electrician by trade. Um, so I'm just going to wire up the, the trailer. I'm going to actually go for the 13 pin arrangement. If anybody knows that, it's what they use on caravans, which means then you get a dedicated power feed to the trailer whilst the car's, being, whilst the car's moving the trailer. So at least it's charging up a leisure battery in the back or you can leave the car hooked up and it still gives you power in the back and things like that rather than just relying on the trailer lights so yeah most most of it i think um like i said it's just going to be time so i'm going to chisel away at this over the um over the next few nights possibly the next week and i'm going to post out little updates as i'm doing it so anyway if you fancy seeing some more of that let me know in the comments um i said it's a bit different from my my normal video I have I have actually got the video and I've still not done it. I looked at it the other day and I went, I've, I've got it half edited, but I've not done it yet. So I took my cart out, which I did on a YouTube short on this channel. And I've got a, um, I keep trying to remember the damn name of the cart. It's a Mac 1. Um, the, it's, a, it's a Mac 1 chassis, which some people say, eh, it's, a, it's an all right handling chassis. This is what I've heard in general anyway. People say, hey, it's, an, it's an all right handling chassis. You know, struggle to get the parts. And yeah, I've kind of found this out already that, any parts I need for it, I've got to kind of. If I will, if I do need the parts, I'm going to have to source them from probably directly from Germany because there's nobody in the UK that sells the parts for them, which is really useful. Um, but yeah, so it's a Mac one running a um, a converted Max Evo engine. So the old um, Rotax Evo, uh, the, old, the old Rotax Evo, uh, sorry, the old Rotax engine. Um, this one had the Evo kit put on it, so it's all right. It's decent enough. Um, I've got a, um, a power readout on it, so that's it's actually been dynoed, and the dyno came back at 30.75 brake horsepower, so that's it's not bad. It does, it does the job. I think that's I think that's pretty much the, the the same for most engines, to be honest. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, but yeah, so I took it out for the first time. Jeez, I was. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna put the video up as soon as possible. Because right at the end of the first clip, when I first take the go, I first take the cart out, and I'm out on track for probably about, it's only about 12 minutes, and I come back into the pits, and literally the last few seconds sum it up perfectly. It's like you can you can actually see it when I'm driving around because 
I've only really done indoor karting before. Um, never had my own kart before. I've only really done indoor karting. But when I went out on this, I mean, as anybody else knows who's done Rotax Evo, it's a different kettle of fish completely. The the kick you get from the power delivery, it's just like next level. And um, yeah, it, it took a good few hours for the smile to slowly drain off my face. So yeah, I'm going to put that video up in a few days. Or, you know, might, hopefully I might even get it up tomorrow. Um, but yeah. If you, if you fancy seeing that anyway, let me know. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Um, if this isn't something you want to stay on the channel for, let me know in the comments and I'll stop doing them. Um, that's not really the thing that probably I've done in this channel before, but I've done them quite a lot on my other YouTube channel. So anyway, right. Thanks very much and I shall um, see you all soon. I'm going to stop recording now because I've been talking for long enough and it's going dark and I'm still using my front camera, which is crap quality. <laughs> anyway, right. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.